what Putin is doing. He's running as an independent without any party uh, backing, any uh, larger machinery beyond the machinery, obviously, of the Kremlin and the uh, prime ministership uh, that he has around him. And this election is all about now his own personal popularity and getting his normally passive base of voters, the larger, the more conservative uh, parts of the population, activated to go out and vote for him. And as I said, in the meantime, there's these protests going on that are all the people who are traditionally opposed uh, to uh, the Russian government, Russian nationalists who want to see more of a Russia for Russians, the communists, the remnants of the old uh, Russian and old Soviet communist party who want much more of a heavy involvement of the state and more of the return back to the welfare state and the provision of uh, wages uh, for pensioners, uh, um, salaries ensured, uh, 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 this kind of thing. And then this new professional class of people who are the 20, 30-somethings who have done very well under Putin, but frankly want something more. This is the internet generation, uh, the group of people who have mobilized and been very much offended by the idea that Putin thinks that he's going to be the national leader from here out uh, to eternity. The reset obviously has been um, you know, somewhat successful in putting a better tone on US-Russian relationships. But a lot of it was really about the personal, um, the personal chemistry with Medvedev that made some uh, steps forward uh, entirely possible. So the real fear for people is that now that Putin is back, that that changes. He's got this naturally more suspicious, more contentious approach uh, to foreign policy and especially to relations with the United States. And also, the rhetoric of the campaign has been very nasty. Anti-Americanism is always a, an old uh, tool in the toolkit for Russian politics. But what you see is the volume is turned up or down depending on how the relationship is going or the needs of the political uh, circumstances. So during the reset, when there was move forwards on policies that Russia was pretty keen on, the volume of anti-Americanism was turned right down. It just never goes away entirely, but certainly there was no accusations of the US doing that or US doing that on a, uh, on a, on a large scale. Now during uh, this campaign, Putin has put the US right back up at the top as enemy number one. The United States is fomenting the protest, they're paying the opposition. A lot of the opposition figures, in uh, Putin's words, are simply stooges of Washington, D.C. There's been lots of accusations of Secretary of State Hillary Clinton literally paying the protesters. In fact, this has become a running joke among many of the protests in Russia, people saying and holding up placards saying, I'm paying for myself, Hillary Clinton didn't bring me here. Others saying, give me the money, you know, wondering you know, where um, their bags of money from the US Embassy are gonna come from. But for Putin, this is deadly serious. He actually does, I think, genuinely believe that there is a movement on the part of the United States because he looks at the rhetoric in our own campaigns and then uh, Congress and Capitol Hill, various hearings. He's pretty convinced that the United States wants him out of office. And when he looks at that contrast of the warm relationship with Medvedev and the reaction uh, that he got when he announced in September that the tandem was over, he was coming back as president, he has a lot of reason from his part to think that you know, the relationship with the United States is, uh, is on the rocks. Even people around Putin, uh, people who are normally closely associated with him, including some of the so-called oligarchs, the business people, are really asking if this is the uh, beginning of a period of stagnation for the country. In the 1970s uh, in the Soviet Union, there was the fair, famous period of uh, stagnation under Leonid Brezhnev, uh, who we'll all remember as uh, a rather decrepit elderly Soviet leader who uh, in fact presided over a time of relative prosperity in the Soviet Union but nothing went anywhere in the politics or the economy. And that's what a lot of people are fearful for, uh, for a next Putin presidency, that this is just going to be a maintenance presidency, that there's no new ideas that have emerged out of, uh, he's been producing a massive manifestos of political campaign documents over uh, the last uh, several weeks. It's very hard to keep up with all of them. Almost every week he has a new um, pronouncement, a new article in one of the papers. But when you really look through all of that, it's just really a repackaging of many of the ideas that he's had before. And this is what he himself has said. Uh, he has not finished yet the agenda that he set out. And in a way, he's kind of saying, give me 20 years in total. He's already been in power 10 to 12. Give me another 6 to 12, and uh, I'll, I'll have finished all of this off. But no one's really sure where this is going. And there's more of a suspicion that what's uh, really at play here is Putin trying to preserve his own personal position 
and then the positions of all of those people around him, part of that extended system, the inner circle of people who've worked with Putin for the last 10 years and many decades before from St. Petersburg, the KGB, all the different institutions that he has been associated with who want to keep their privileged positions in the Russian political and economic system and don't really want to see new people emerging.